Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Gorse Hill Baptist Church. Welcome to our Sunday uh, service. Um, good morning to you if you're on Zoom and I can see you and some of you are waving back. Thank you. Um, and good morning as well if you're watching on Facebook. I've got it on my phone, so I might, if I get a moment in a second, just type a quick hello there. Um, but yeah, it's really good uh, to see everybody. Uh, really pleased uh, that you're joining with us uh, this morning. Um, one of the things that we've been doing in our house uh, since uh, since the lockdown began uh, is we've been learning um, a catechism together. Uh, and a catechism is like a, a series of questions uh, and answers. Um, and it's very useful for learning uh, uh, a lot about God and the Bible um, and summarizing lots of things that uh, we believe. So I've got a little bit uh, of a Sunday morning uh, catechism for you to learn and join in with. So I won't be able to hear you, but I might be able to see your mouth moving, but everybody else in your household will be able to hear you um, joining in. So really, really go for it. So the first question uh, is, what is today? And the answer is Sunday. So we can all practice that together. So I say, uh, what day is it today? Sunday. Okay. There we go. Oh, and some, some people, Lars, I could hear you then. Uh, thank you very much. And then the next question, the next one is, um, what else do we call today? And the answer is the Lord's Day. Okay, so what day is it today? Sunday. Uh, what else do we call today? The Lord's Day. Well done. And then the next question is, why do we call it the Lord's Day? Uh, and the answer is wonderful. It's because Jesus died, but now he is alive again. Okay, so why do we call it the Lord's Day? Because Jesus died right. and now he is alive again. So let's go from the beginning. Uh, what day is it today? Sunday. Sunday. What else do we call today? The Lord's Day. And why do we call it the Lord's Day? Because Jesus died and now he is alive again. So well done if you went for that. Uh, in your homes. I can see lots of people's mouths moving. So thank you very much. Um, today is the Lord's Day and we are going to celebrate together uh, that Jesus died, uh, but now he is alive again. Uh, we're going to enjoy Jesus together. Uh, we're going to praise uh, Jesus together this morning. Uh, one of the ways uh, actually that we enjoy Jesus together and we praise Jesus together is we meet uh, to uh, reflect on and give thanks to God for all that he is doing uh, in our church. Uh, and on the 24th of September, uh, we have our AGM uh, at 7.30 in the evening. Now, previously, this was going to be something that was on Zoom and also a small number of people gathering at church. Um, but the deacons uh, very wisely have decided that this is now going to be something that we do only on Zoom. Uh, you probably had an email about that on Friday, uh, but just in case you missed it, uh, the AGM uh, for the members is now only on Zoom. Uh, all members should by now have received either an email or a letter uh, about the AGM. If you haven't, uh, please contact Lars. Uh, every member should have uh, by now, again, through email, or a letter received information about how you can vote uh, for new members of the diaconate. Uh, and the voting is gonna take place before uh, the, uh, the AGM itself. Uh, and actually uh, all of the votes, whether they're done online or whether it's a postal vote, uh, they need to be with the deacons uh, by the 20th of September. If you have any questions about that whole process, uh, please contact one of the deacons to discuss that. Uh, there'll be, uh, there are four uh, new deacons who we are considering for a place on the deck, and they are Vicky Payne, uh, Julie Harris, uh, Adam Sibley, uh, and Rebecca Tromans. Uh, keep on praying uh, about the AGM. Uh, and uh, keep reflecting on all that God uh, is doing uh, in our congregation at the moment. Even though we're not gathering uh, together as we would perhaps would like to on a Sunday morning, God is still doing lots and lots and lots through us, uh, and we'll hear lots about that uh, at the AGM. 
Okay. Uh, uh, Heidi and Constance and Talitha have been very excited about this because they saw me prepping it in the week. Uh, one of the things we also do in our home is we read uh, from this. It's uh, a little book called Pens. Uh, it's a devotional for families, uh, especially if you've got a family with very small children. Uh, I'm going to read you one of the stories now. Uh, but me and Liz have a whole stack of these uh, here at our home. Uh, the plan is that eventually we will have them all at church for families to borrow. Um, but if you uh, would like one of these devotionals to share uh, with your small children or grandchildren, uh, get in touch with me and Liz and we can uh, sort you out a couple of copies. They're really, really good. Uh, and I'm going to read you uh, one of the stories now. So Lars, if we could have the first pictures here we go. Okay. It was nighttime and tucked up in bed. Marco was wide awake. Just down the road, so was Henry. They were both too excited to sleep. Marco and Henry had a hero. His name was Super Pen. Uh, they'd read all about his daring adventures in their favorite comic, and they just found out that he was going to star in his very own film. I'm never going to sleep again, said Marco. If I manage to get to sleep, said Henry, I'll eat my pillow. They just couldn't wait for the film to be shown in Penn's Town Cinema. Okay, next page. In the middle of Marco's bedroom floor, there were heaps uh, and heaps of comics. In the middle of the heaps sat Marco and Henry. What are you going to do with all these comics, asked Gloria. I'm sure you've read them all before. Yeah, we have, nodded Marco, but now we're having a big read. We want to know Super Pen's adventures inside and out, back to front, before we go to see him in his film. Oh yes, grinned Henry. Then we'll enjoy the film even more. And anyway, I'll be happy to read all about Super Pen over and over and over again. Okay, next page. I love it when Super Pen rescues someone cried Marco. I love it when Super Pen swims faster than a motorboat, squeals Henry. I love it when Super Pen climbs up the side of a building, laughed Marco. I love it when Super Pen flies like an aeroplane, beamed Henry. Are you still going on and on and on about Super Pen? smiled Philippa. You've been talking and chatting about him for ages. Well, that's because he's so brilliant, said Marco and Henry. He must be, replied Philippa. Do you know what I'm going to do? Super Pen's adventures sound so good, I'm going to start reading all about them myself. What we need to do, said Marco, is tell as many pens as possible about Super Pen's films. We don't want them to miss it when it comes to the town cinema. How are we going to do that? asked Henry. Max had an idea. Why don't you make some posters, he suggested. So Marco and Henry made posters in bright colours. They included a picture of Super Pen and the words, Super Pen the movie, coming to Penn's Town Cinema soon. Then Max helped Henry and Marco to put the posters up all around Penn's Town. Wow, said Henry. If we, can, if we make up some words about Super Pen to go with it, we'll have our very un own Super Pen song. The words to the Super Pen song went like this. Oh, I should have composed a melody in my head before I did this. Super Pen, he's a hero. Super Pen, he's the best. You know Super Pen when you see him, because Super Pen is written on his vest. Charlotte asked, can I sing your songs too? Of course, grinned Marco and Henry. So Charlotte did. All across Penn's town. I know something you don't know said Denzel to Marco and Henry. What's that? Marco and Henry asked. Denzel replied, Super Pen has a fan club. Really? Marco and Henry gasped. Lots of Super Pen fans belong to it, Denzel said. When you join, you get a big special comic, just for club members, and a big window sticker. What's on the window sticker? squealed Henry. It says, I'm a Super Pen fan, replied Denzel. So everyone who sees it will know just how much you love Super Pen. What are you waiting for, Henry? yelled Marco. We're joining the fan club right now. Henry and Marco were playing at being Super Pen. I'm going to make sure everyone's happy, yelled Marco. 
I'm going to make sure no one else is in trouble, shouted Henry. In their comics, Marco and Henry had read all about Superpen, how he rescued and helped, how he brought happiness and sorted out trouble. He was a real superhero, and Marco and Henry wanted to be just like him. Thank you very much, Lars. Um, when I read that story in the week, it just made me think of the early believers in Acts that we've been reading about the last few weeks, how excited they were about Jesus, how they told everyone about Jesus, how they tried to uh, imitate Jesus and go around uh, the city and the towns doing all kinds of incredible things. And we can sometimes read about those believers uh, in the book of Acts and we can almost be like, I kind of wish I would have been a believer back then. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been great to be that excited about Jesus? Wouldn't it have been great to uh, tell everyone all about him and, and join in all the incredible things uh, that the early believers were doing? And we can get tempted, can't we, to kind of wish maybe we'd been a Christian uh, at a different time. But actually, uh, the story of Acts, the book of Acts, carries on uh, into today's church, we can actually still be uh, just as excited uh, about Jesus. We can still join in with those early believers and do all of the things uh, that they did. That's what we've been reading about the last couple of weeks in Acts, and that's what we're going to carry on uh, reading about uh, today. Now, I'm very sorry uh, for my Super Pen song. It probably was not... Um, probably was not as melodic uh, or tuneful as it could have been, uh, but we are going to now join uh, with Mark uh, and the team, and they are going to lead us uh, in some song worship. Not about Super Pen, of course, uh, but about our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Mark. We're going to share in a couple of songs together, so uh, grab your instruments, join in at home, or simply just reflect as we worship together this morning. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that, uh, that we thank you that we have a God who surrounds us with his love. A God who pours out his power upon us. A God who supports us in every circumstance that we face. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mark uh, and the team. Fantastic uh, praise and worship there. Uh, the Sibley family are now going to lead us uh, in our prayers this morning. We pray that all the people who have gone back to school have settled in nicely to their new classes. We pray for a restful time for Steve and Christine as they enjoy their time away from church pray that they return reinvigorated for the challenges that still lie ahead. We pray for the upcoming AGM and for the members of the church who are signing for the diaconate. We pray for Judy, Adam, Rebecca and Vicky as they consider God's calling in this way. Uh, uh, pray for we pray for the worrying rises in coronavirus cases. We pray that the new rules in place from tomorrow are enough to limit the spread. We pray that Jacob settles easily in Swindon when he arrives in just over a week. We pray for wisdom for him and the wider church as we work together to minister to young people of course help. We pray for all the groups that would normally be running at this time. Time Club, CFC and Friday Night Fun, Lunch Club Kids Zone, House Groups, Settles On. We pray for wisdom when decisions are made on how to return. We also pray for all those who usually attend that they are safe and well at this moment. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you very much, guys. Wonderful, wonderful prayers this morning. Thank you for blessing us with those. Okay, we are going to read uh, our Bible passage this morning. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of the service, we are carrying on looking at Acts. That's where we've been for a few weeks. Uh, and today uh, we're kind of considering the last couple of weeks uh, that we've been in Acts and also uh, today's part of the story. Uh, so the reading is Acts 5. Uh, verses 12 uh, to 16 and uh, it's got the little subheading in my bible many signs and wonders are done now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles and they were all together in solomon's portico none of the rest dared join them but the people held them in high esteem and more than ever Believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets, laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all uh, healed. Uh, I'm going to lead us in a, in a prayer uh, and then uh, we're going to look at this passage uh, together. Uh, Father, Lord God, we thank you uh, for the readings that we've been looking at this last few weeks from the book of Acts. Uh, we thank you for when we look at what these early believers did, we get very, very excited and it feels like you stir us uh, to uh, new possibilities for our churches today. And so we pray, Lord, that uh, you would speak to us through these verses, uh, that you would challenge us and you would show us, Lord, where uh, we need to grow uh, and where we need to move out of our comfort zones. So, Lord, would you move us uh, and would you challenge us this morning? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, now, back in Easter, uh, many of us, uh, many of us enjoyed spring harvest. Uh, I guess it was uh, very, very early on in lockdown, uh, just a couple of weeks, perhaps even after, after the national lockdown started. And it was, as far as I can remember, one of the first events that obviously decided to uh, 
not actually have people turn up on site, uh, but very, very quickly moved a lot of content and a lot of stuff all over onto YouTube. Uh, and it was all free for people to enjoy. So there were morning devotionals um, by the guy who led the 24 seven prayer movement. Uh, there was evening worship. Uh, there were talks. Uh, they moved all their children's and their youth programs that they normally have at Spring Harvest uh, onto YouTube. Uh, and it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, week. Uh, and I know many of us uh, uh, joined in and watched a lot of the stuff on YouTube. It's, it's all still on YouTube. So if you missed it, uh, you can go back. Uh, and you can watch a lot of the content. It was really, really great. Uh, and Gavin and Anne Calver, who are some of the leaders uh, at Spring Harvest, uh, wrote a book. Uh, the theme of the whole event was uh, Unleashed, uh, the Axe Church Today. And thank you to Mari, who has uh, got this book into, into my hands and I'm reading through it. Uh, and it's really, really challenging. Uh, and it's really, really wonderful. And I want to read you uh, a little bit uh, from the book uh, right now. Uh, the book of Acts tells the exciting story of how the spirit led the early Jesus community to respond creatively and continually in new and surprising situations as it preached the gospel. The early church were constantly looking for opportunities. They simply cannot help but speak about Jesus. Uh, and it strikes me as you read through the book of Acts that actually uh, these opportunities that they saw and took advantage of tend to fall into three uh, main categories. Um, the first one, and, and Steve uh, mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, it's from their prayer, actually. Uh, the word is preached boldly. Uh, yep, Steve shared from Acts 4 on that. The word is preached boldly. Uh, the gospel, the good news is proclaimed. The people are being bold uh, with words uh, and they are talking about Jesus wherever they go. It seems like they're talking about Jesus all the time. That's the first thing they're doing, boldly preaching the word. The second thing that it strikes me that they're always doing, and Steve Henderson preached on this last week. Remember, he had that slide that said spirit of generosity. Needs are being met. Uh, they're constantly identifying needs. They're constantly challenging social injustices. Uh, they're literally selling what they have and then sharing it around so that nobody uh, goes without. So they're boldly preaching about the word, talking about Jesus wherever they go. They're constantly looking for ways in which they can meet people's needs uh, and tackle social injustices. And third, uh, this is what we read today. And actually, the, that Acts 5 passage is actually uh, what God did in response to the prayer uh, that they prayed, that Steve Robinson uh, read a couple of weeks ago. They, remember, they prayed for boldness to speak the word, and they prayed also that God would stretch out his hand and do healings and signs and wonders and miracles uh, through the name of Jesus. Uh, and, and that's also what happens throughout the book of Acts, constantly asking God to do what only he can do. And it's a pattern I think you see played out through the whole of the New Testament, talking about Jesus, meeting needs, asking God to, own, to do what only he can do. Talking about Jesus, meeting needs, asking God to do what only he can do over and over and over again. Uh, as I said, that, that you can get that book and all of the talks and all of the Unleashed Act stuff is still on the Spring Harvest uh, YouTube channel. I recommend you go see it. Around a similar time, though, to Spring Harvest, I wonder if you remember another Christian organization that was making the news. I wonder if it comes to mind as I describe what was happening. Uh, there was a church in this country that had little tiny pots of what they were calling divine healing oil. Uh, and they claimed that if you had that oil, uh, it would keep the coronavirus away. Or if you had a little pot of the divine healing oil, it would heal you of 
any coronavirus symptoms. Uh, they sold those little tubes of divine healing oil through their website for £91 for a little pot. And a spokesperson for the church said, we've sold over 2,000. Around a similar time, there was a pastor in America. Uh, he has a very big church and their services are streamed on, uh, on, a, on some kind of channel. Uh, and he encouraged everybody to inhale the wind of God and then blow it out. And they blew the coronavirus away from the United States of America. So no one would catch it. Uh, no one would fall ill. You may also remember a few years ago, uh, a church in Korea where the pastor was so um, anointed with the healing of God that he could wipe his forehead with a handkerchief. And again, for a cost, you could buy that handkerchief from the church uh, and you would experience uh, God's healing. They weren't sent for free to hospitals or to sick people, uh, but they were purchased uh, through the website. Unfortunately, when it comes to signs and wonders and miracles, those kind of stories may be the first thing that pops into some of our heads. The abuse uh, and the fakery uh, that is around uh, signs and wonders. Others, others of us would have prayed for things or someone. We would have asked God to stretch out his hand, to heal them, to make them better, only for no healing to occur. And to say that we are disappointed when that happens is an understatement. We are left hurt and we are left confused. Some of us may even know someone who has prayed for someone to be healed. It hasn't happened and they've walked away from the faith. Uh, the hurt and confusion is too much. So although early believers, early generations of believers talked about Jesus, met needs and asked for God to do what only he can do. Most churches today lean towards one of those three areas. You get churches that are very good at proclaiming the word, very strong teaching ministries, but they somehow don't see the need that's in their community. And they maybe don't pray uh, for people to be healed. You then get churches that become driven by tackling social injustices and meeting need and they're passionate about it and they do it all the time but somehow in their drive to meet needs they forget about the transforming power of the gospel and they forget uh, to call on God to heal and do what only he can do. Then you have churches that very very passionately pursue and chase signs and wonders and unfortunately, sometimes churches that do that do so with such passion and such hope that they become a bit misled and they strive perhaps too hard uh, to demonstrate signs and wonders. And they don't proclaim the gospel and they take their eye off social need. I wonder if we pause to reflect for a moment, which of those three things do we feel Gorse Hill Baptist Church leans towards? Are we talkers about Jesus? Do we meet need? Or do we call on God to do what only he can do? I'll be very honest with you. It's tempting, isn't it, to think that if we were too bold in our preaching of the word, people would think we were a little bit unusual. All of the friendships that we've built, maybe people would be a little bit put off. And it's also tempting to think, well, if signs and wonders and healings are open to so much abuse and it leaves so many people hurt and confused, maybe that's best left in the margins of our church. Keep it out the back in a private room where nobody can see it and feel awkward or feel freaked out. After all, I think churches are often tempted to think, well, you know what? We're meeting a lot of needs. I mean, think about our church. We did the fun day. We're doing bags of hope. We're exploring how we can do cap. We're exploring all kinds of opportunities to meet the needs of those people in our community. 
and it's working isn't it where we're making those connections we're making those relationships and slowly but steadily we're dripping the gospel into these messages perhaps that's enough perhaps with all of the abuse of signs and wonders perhaps with all of the things that can people might think of us if we preach the word too boldly maybe we've just found our thing in verse 14 and 15 of the verses i read today it says that multitudes were added uh, to the lord men and women come into the lord in faith uh, this is the result i think not just of the signs and wonders that we we read about today but i think this is the result of how those early believers have lived out their faith that we've been reading about the last couple of weeks this is a result of them proclaiming the word boldly this is the result of them meeting needs and this is the result of them asking god to stretch out his hand to heal and do signs and wonders multitudes are being added to the lord do we long for men to come to faith and know the lord jesus do we long for women to come to faith and know the lord jesus do we long for families and for young people and for children to come to faith and know jesus i think that for churches that really want the multitudes to come to the Lord, I think churches must acknowledge the incompleteness of their ministries. Churches that boldly proclaim the word, but don't meet social needs and don't ask God to do what only he can do, are not expressing the gospel like the early believers did. Churches that meet needs, no matter how many needs they meet, but don't proclaim the word and don't pray for people to be healed, they're not living out the gospel like the early believers did. And churches that pray for healings, but don't see the need in the community, don't tell people, don't clearly explain what Jesus did, they're not living out uh, the gospel as the early believers did. I can remember at a members meeting uh, a long time ago, I can't remember who put it together, um, but there was uh, a spreadsheet uh, put up for everybody to see. Uh, and on that spreadsheet, you might remember it, um, it, had, uh, it had all of the different ministries going down one side uh, that we do. And then across the top, I think it said whether that was engagement uh, or whether that was discipleship or whether that was evangelism. And we, we ordered and we thought about everything we do as a church in terms of those things. I'm not suggesting we do this, but I wonder what it would look like if we listed all of the things that we do at church. And then across the top, we said, talking about Jesus, meeting need, praying for God to do what only he can do. If you imagine the different things we do as a church, and we match them against those three ways that the early believers lived out their faith. I wonder if we'd spot anywhere where we need to grow. I wonder if we'd spot anywhere where we need God to move us. I wonder if we'd spot anywhere where we need God to shake us up. I wonder if we'd spot anywhere where we need to plead with God to encourage us and to challenge us and to grow us. I wonder if we'd spot somewhere where we actually need God to, we need to ask God to help us be healed of past disappointments and hurts. In what areas do we need God to remove our enjoyment of being just a friendly neighborhood church? And that's not just for our church, but it's for each and every one of us. Now, we, we can't help but lean towards one of those things some of us are extroverts some people find it very easy to talk about jesus to talk about their faith they've got the gift of the gab and so they lean towards that some of us in the congregation are incredibly incredibly organized we see a need 
and we see immediately the team that we would need to put together, the process that we need to go through in order to meet that need. We're very strong at that. We're very, very good at that. Some of us, through perhaps a background from a different church or an experience, have a real passion for praying for people to be healed. And actually, what we need are those people, I think, to be genuine to the person uh, that God has made them. So if you have a thing inside you where you love to pray for people to be healed, but perhaps um, for some reason, the way our church services work on a Sunday morning, perhaps we've made you feel like, oh, you have to keep that part in. When we start gathering again together, I'd like to encourage you to go for it. We need those of, those of you in the congregation that love praying for people to be healed, love praying for God to move. You know what? We need you to go for it when we're gathering again. We need you to help us grow our faith. If you're the kind of person who's got the gift of the gab and you love talking about Jesus, we need to hear your testimonies. Uh, someone at the fun day took 15 copies of Sorted Men's magazine because they had 15 blokes in mind that they wanted to give that magazine to and witness about Jesus. We need to hear from that person. We need to know who those men are. We need to pray for those men. We need to be encouraged by that person's story. And if you're the kind of person who is an organiser, you're good on a spreadsheet. You can see a need that needs meeting and then you can put that team together and meet that need. We are really good at that. But let's be honest, we're not all selling our possessions and sharing among each other. So there's no need yet. So you need to keep on going as well. Let's not be a church that only talks about Jesus. Let's not be a church that only meets needs. Let's not be a church that only prays for sick people to be healed. Let's actually decide right now to be a church that puts the stake in the ground right in the middle of those three things. We're going to talk about Jesus, we're going to meet needs, and we're going to beg and plead to the Lord to do what only he can do. Then we will be living out our faith and living out the gospel like those early believers did. I want to read a real quick prayer to you, if I can find it. Okay, uh, one of my favourite, um, one of my favourite uh, ministers to kind of like buy his books and read. Um, you may have heard of him. It's a, it's a guy called John Piper. Many of you have probably heard of him and are instantly put off. He has a bit of a reputation for being a bit of an old dinosaur, I'm afraid, kind of like stuck in the past. Very reformed, very conservative, uh, very particular about certain things in the Bible. Um, and not, no surprise, uh, led a church that was very strong on the preaching uh, of the word, but perhaps didn't do some of the other things particularly well. Uh, one of his friends, a guy called Matt Chandler, uh, back in 2010, uh, he was a leader of a church uh, in Texas called Village Church, uh, discovered that he had a brain tumour uh, and some of the cancer was spreading around his body. Uh, and John Piper, the old dinosaur, uh, prayed for his friend Matt Chandler uh, and this is what he prayed. We ask that your name be magnified in Matt's life whether by life or by death, be magnified in his body. But Lord, we also ask you in the name of Jesus that you would heal Matt Chandler, touch his brain and touch anywhere else in his body where the cancerous cells have gone and kill them. Destroy this cancer and remove it from Matt's body. We are asking this for the glory of your name. And when I heard that prayer, I realized I don't think I've ever prayed for anyone to be healed in that way. I've offered general, uh, vague uh, prayers uh, for healing. Uh, but if old fuddy-duddy dinosaurs like John Piper uh, can discover how much they need uh, a healing ministry, uh, then we uh, definitely can. So I'd like to pray for us. Uh, 
or now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the last few weeks that we've been reading about the early church in Acts. And we've read about how they talked about you all the time. And we've read about how uh, they saw needs uh, among themselves and in their community and they met them. But we also have read, Lord, how they called out for you to stretch out your hand and to heal and to perform signs and wonders and miracles through Jesus's name. And Lord God, I pray that you would stir us and you would challenge us. There are some of those things that the early church did that we do particularly well, I feel, at Gorsal Baptist Church. And perhaps, Lord, there are some ministries and some of us who realise that there are some aspects of our faith that we perhaps have neglected or perhaps even pushed to the background and pretended aren't there. But Lord, we want to express uh, your gospel and we want to express our calling like the early church did. So Lord Jesus, would you move us uh, and would you help us? In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, Matt, uh, sorry, Mark uh, and the guys are going to lead us uh, in another song uh, before we close. Yes, Lord God, would you send your power? Help us to speak about Jesus boldly to whoever we come to and come across. Lord Jesus, move us with compassion so that we meet needs in the community and with our neighbours and in our streets. And Lord God, would you fill us uh, again with hope and with faith and passion to call on you to do what only you can do and heal and save and perform great signs and wonders through your son's name. In Jesus' name, we lift these prayers to you. Amen. Thank you, everyone.